Welcome to A Slice of Therapy. This podcast was created with Anchor. And if you've not heard of Anchor, let me explain. It's free. It's a really easy way to make a podcast. And it helps me because I can just do this every day directly into my phone. Because there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So if you fancy making a podcast too, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. We're often advised, aren't we, to set ourselves some goals. Goals seem to be a very popular thing that you see in the literature. That in the self-help books, they'll say, set yourself a goal. Write down your goals. And goals aren't a bad thing necessarily to give you a direction of travel, but there is a problem with goals. And the problem with goals is that the moment that you make a goal, you're immediately in a state of lack. If I make a goal to be a millionaire and I then focus on the goal, the thing that I'm going to be focused on by the very fact that I have the goal is the fact that I'm not a millionaire. Now, that wouldn't be a personal goal of mine, if I'm honest, but you get the point. If I'm wanting to weigh a certain amount of weight, whether I'm trying to build up or whether I'm trying to trim down, the moment I set the goal for that, if I then focus on the goal, then for the most part, until that point where I reach it, I'm in a state of not again. I'm not that thing. And so focusing on goals puts us in a state of lack and can often make us feel less than because we're not there yet. Now, I think there's something that's better than goals. And as I say, goals aren't useless necessarily. They, they set a direction of travel. They'll set a target. And if you like goals, then fair enough. You can still use them. But once you set the goal, what I'd recommend is to make the focus of that quite blurry. You know your direction of travel. You're heading somewhere. But I'd advise or invite you anyway to maybe take your focus away from the goal. Because as I say, if you, t if you keep your focus on the goal, you'll focus on the thing that you're not. You'll focus on the fact that you're not that thing. And it can lead to feeling a bit miserable. What's better then? is to focus on the thing that makes you feel successful instead. You know, if I want to be a millionaire and I'm not, that kind of invites me to feel like a bit of a loser, doesn't it? If I'm wanting to be this weight, but I'm not that weight, then again, it invites me to beat myself up. Oh, if only I was that weight instead of this weight. If only I was had that much money instead of this much money. It starts taking us on a downward cycle. We start to feel unsuccessful with this aim of success, which is at some point in the future, if only we can get there. And the counterproductive element of that is the more that we feel unsuccessful, the less likely that it is that we get there. All the kind of research on behavior design and habits says that the thing that actually is the engine of any habit, any kind of repeated thing that we do that gets us there, is feeling successful, is feeling like a winner. And so when we focus on the goal, we're doing the opposite of that. We're feeling unsuccessful. So we need to switch that so that we can start feeling successful even before we reach the goal. Now, the way to do that is to... Focus instead on the process. So instead of focused instead on what is my goal? What am I aiming for? You can ask yourself a different question, which is. What would it look like if I was the kind of person who was on their way to that goal? So I don't know if I want to lose like six pound in weight, I might say, well. What would it look like if I was the kind of person who was six pounds lower than now? 
What would I be doing if I was that kind of person? If I was on my way to becoming someone who is six pounds lighter? Or if I wanted to be a millionaire, you know, I could say, well, let's suppose I'm a person who's on their way to becoming a millionaire. What does that look like? And from that question, you can start to develop, you can start to identify the certain things that you'd be doing. The certain emotional states that you'd be in, the sense of yourself that you'd have, the actions that you'd be taking. And then every time that you act and do something, which is essentially a vote in favour of you becoming that person, that actually shows you that you're <clears throat> you're acting in the here and now as if you're on your way. Then you're going to feel successful. Once you've identified the certain actions and feelings and emotions and thoughts and beliefs. Then all you need to do then is keep on doing those things. If you were the sort of person who was on their way to achieving your goal, what would you be doing, thinking, believing, feeling? And then every time you do that action or think that thought or believe that belief or feel that feeling, whether it be confidence or whatever, then you can give yourself a pat on the back. You'll be like, yes, I've just done it. I've been successful right here, right now. See, the goal is just a, a target. It doesn't actually get you to do the things that you need to do. And as I say, it can sometimes demotivate because it kind of focuses us on the fact that we're not there yet. And so we can feel unsuccessful. But every single day that we do the thing that is necessary to move us towards that, every single time we take an action, which is the kind of action that a person who is on their way to reaching that goal would take. We can feel successful in that moment. We can celebrate that. And then we can feel successful today. We don't have to wait. And we can feel successful tomorrow and the day after that. In fact, every single day that we wake up, we can take an action. The kind of action that someone who is on their way to achieving that goal would take. And then in the taking of that action, we can celebrate ourselves and feel successful. And then we're more likely to get there. And so by doing it this way, our focus switches from the goal to the process. Because after all, if you keep acting like the person who is on their way to achieving that goal, then you will. Whereas if you just focus on the goal... That's not the thing that's actually going to be the engine that takes you there. And so whether you like goals or not, or whether you prefer to set a direction of travel or not, that's going to be in terms of what suits you best. But whichever one that you do, setting a direction of travel or setting a firm goal, what I'd invite you to do then is to ask yourself that question. What would I be doing? What actions would I be taking if I was the kind of person who was on their way to meeting that goal? And then do those actions and then celebrate yourself because in every action that you take, you're successful. And then let that success drive you forward to want to do it again. Because it probably will. Because being successful and being a winner is fun. <laughs> and it's a nice feeling. And it's the kind of feeling that we want over and over and over again. And so by focusing on the process, you're going to get those feelings. And you're much more likely to get to where you want to be than if you simply focus on the goal itself. So that's my invite to you. To ask yourself that question, come up with those actions and see how you get on. So if you find this useful, then please do share it to somebody else 
so that they can listen to the episode as well. You can subscribe as well, completely free, so you never miss an episode. Wherever you get your podcasts from, you can subscribe. You can watch these on video as well. Just go to a sliceoftherapy.com and you'll be able to watch them on YouTube. And if you'd like to work with me directly, I'm Alan Parry, and you'll find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. So thanks for listening, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another one.